Hello! In this episode of Proko, we're going to learn the anatomy of the pelvis. We'll explore the structure of the parts, the difference between a male and female pelvis, and how to simplify the structure to make it more manageable to draw. Let's take a look at the parts of the pelvis. The two hip bones, along with the sacrum and coccyx of the spine, form what's known as the pelvis. Each hip bone consists of three parts. These three parts actually start out as three separate bones at birth and fuse together throughout puberty. On the top half stands a wing-like wall called the ilium. Under the ilium in the front is the pubis. And behind the pubis is the ischium. You can remember that there's all sorts of icky stuff that happens in the ischium. These three bones fuse together right in the middle of the acetabulum a deep socket of the ball and socket joint of the hip. The femur sits right in there and rotates in all directions to move the leg. The ilium. The ilium is the largest of the three parts. The two curved walls converge in the back, connected by the sacrum. The part of the ilium that is visible on the surface is the top edge, known as the iliac crest. So let's take a closer look at it. The iliac crest starts in the front at the asis, that's anterior superior iliac spine, and it ends in the back at the pesis, or posterior superior iliac spine. Don't miss this, I mention these two landmarks a lot, and I use them a lot when drawing the figure. From the top view, the crest curves outward from the asis for a short distance to the tubercle, then curves back for a longer distance and then almost straight backward for a short distance to the pieces. From side view, the crest creates a half circle arc. This arc shape will vary from a smooth curve in some people to a sharp corner at the top point in other people. This high point is somewhat back from center. Men tend to have a more angular high corner, while women have a smoother curve. Only the front one-fourth of the crest is actually visible on the surface, starting from this tubercle. The rest is covered by the external oblique muscle on the sides and flank fat in the back. Here's a good example where you can clearly see the asis in the front and the external oblique covering the side portion. On a more muscular or overweight body type, it appears as a sharp edge indicating the bottom border of the external oblique or love handles. If the torso bends laterally, the external oblique is stretched up, sometimes exposing the middle section of the crest. On a very lean person, the asis pokes out as a visible protrusion. It pokes out even farther when the spine is extended and the muscles around the asis are stretched. The visible portion curves downward and inward. Try to feel it on yourself. In the back, the posterior superior iliac spines are surrounded by muscles and flank fat. They are usually seen as two dimples where connective tissue attached to the spines will pull the skin inward. You might see a subtle indication of the crest in men, though mostly softened by the flank fat. In women, it can be so softened that the hips appear to continue all the way to the top of the waist. In some poses, when a lean model stretches her back muscles, the bones push out and appear as protrusions instead of dimples. The pubis. Okay, let's move on to the pubis. The two sides are joined by a cartilaginous disc at the pubic symphysis. This is a commonly used landmark, but you won't actually see a bony point because it's covered by pubic fat. You can find it by following the trail of the inguinal ligament, a thin string-like ligament stretching from the asis to the pubic tubercle, just lateral of the pubic symphysis. It defines the lower border of the abdominal mass, called the furrows of the groin, and appears deeper in men. The pubic symphysis aligns with the level of the tailbone, although this varies. In men, it's also on the same vertical plane with the asis. Another useful alignment 
is the pubic symphysis tends to be the vertical center of the whole body. In the back, the vertical center is between the bottom of the sacral triangle and the bottom of the buttocks, right in the middle of where the glutes meet. Gender differences. The pelvis has the most divergence between male and female of the entire skeleton, mainly because the female pelvis is built to allow a woman to give birth. Hey Skelly, I'd like you to meet Skella. What makes Skelly so attracted to Skella's pelvis? Well, a female pelvis has lighter and thinner parts. It's about two finger widths wider and two finger widths shorter than a male pelvis. The walls of the ilium are more vertical, but not as tall. The pelvis is tilted forward more on a female. The aces protrude forward more and don't align with the pubic symphysis. On a man, the aces and pubic symphysis align on the same vertical plane. You might also notice that the pubic arch is much wider on a female pelvis. About 120 degrees in women, but only 90 degrees in men. This means that women's ischia are farther apart creating a wider gap between the leg muscles because the insertion points of the ductor muscles are farther. On a woman, you might see a gap even if the legs are together. On a man, the gap is much smaller. Sometimes there is no gap, even if the legs are separated. The widening of all these parts on a female pelvis pushes the acetabula laterally, which in turn pushes the greater trochanters. These differences along with more fat distribution, account for why women have more prominent hips. An average woman will have a higher body fat percentage than an average man, so the baby doesn't starve during hard times. Like the pelvis, the sacrum is also shorter, wider, and curves posteriorly more. On the surface, this plane of the lower back is more angled on a woman and more vertical on a man. <laughs> the main reason for the wider female pelvis is to create a larger inlet and larger outlet for a baby to pass through. The inlet is this round shape here, very round and wide on a female. On a male pelvis, the inlet shape is more like this. The outlet is the space between the bottoms of the ischia and tailbone. You can see how everything is more spaced out on the female pelvis. Perfect for childbirth. Allow me to demonstrate. As you can see, the baby passes through Skella's pelvis quite easily. But with Skelly, well, To review, a male pelvis is characterized by height, weight, more vertical angle, thickness, sharper angles, and a smaller cavity. A female pelvis is characterized by width, lightness, forward tilt, thinness, and a larger cavity. You Simplified structure. As you can probably tell, the forms of the pelvis are quite complex. Trying to imagine these forms from various angles, let alone drawing them, is very challenging. Let's take a look at a few ways we can simplify the pelvis to make it easier to construct and pose the body. The bucket. Now, the method I'll be using a lot in this anatomy course is the bucket. I like it because starting the construction with the bucket allows us to get really accurate placements for the landmarks. 
A bucket is basically a tapered cylinder. This cylinder, in a neutral standing pose, is tilted forward, like the pelvis. It's wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. Also, the width is longer than the depth. So the top and bottom caps are not perfect circles. This ellipse of the top cap is the first thing I draw. It determines a lot of things. The width, the forward tilt, and the side to side leaning. It's also not too hard to find on the surface of a model. From the front, use the aces points to determine the side to side leaning angle. From the back, use the dimples at the pieces or the bottom edges of the external obliques. Now, from the top, you'll notice that this ellipse doesn't really follow the shape of the iliac crest all the way. It does for this middle portion, but then the crest takes a sharp turn inward, leaving this extra space. Well, if you consider the muscles and flank fat in this area, this ellipse actually follows the surface forms nicely. And in the front, the curve follows the form of the abs. Of course, on an obese body, this won't work as well. So we're looking just at this portion of the iliac crest when drawing the top ellipse. After I've established the ellipse, I'll add the side planes. The length depends on how much foreshortening there is caused by the tilt and our point of view. Longer lines when there is no foreshortening and shorter lines when there is a lot of foreshortening. You also have to think about the gender differences. Remember, a female pelvis is wider and shorter than a male pelvis. Finally, add the bottom cap and that gives me a simplified form of the pelvis. There we have a simplified representation of the pelvis as a bucket. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to break it down further to construct the minor forms of the pelvis. In the meantime, fill a page with buckets from various angles. Premium Anatomy students, you can log into your account and use the 3D model of the bucket and pelvis as a reference. Spin it around and draw the bucket. If you'd like to sign up for the Premium Anatomy course, go to proco.com slash anatomy. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you're posting your drawings, use hashtag Proco. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Also, check out the Anatomy for Artists group on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash anatomy for artists. If you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button to subscribe to the Proco newsletter. Did you just fart? Because you blew me away. That's just <laughs> Do you know what my shirt is made of? Boyfriend material. Or But I should be No, offended. actually don't don't shake your head. Just just stare at me. But I should be offended because it's I should have to look up my face like, oh yeah, I did. How'd you know? I'm just kidding. Uh, the next one just be a subtle eye roll. I was hoping you wouldn't block my pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> what was that body roll? <laughs> my love for you is like diarrhea. I can't hold it in. No. <laughs> That's gross.
Maybe Skella should walk out of the shot because he's like, Ew, you have diarrhea? <laughs> Girl, you look so good. I'd marry your brother just to get in your family. Ew. <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Girl, you look so good. I'd marry your brother just to get in your family. Ew. Why? That's like a horrible pickup line. <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> but does it doesn't even make any sense. Why would you marry my brother? Because then I'd be in your family. Okay, then you can never date me unless you're in my family. It, it's, it's funny. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> 